Hello, welcome to Enlightened Empath, your community for the spiritually awakened. We hope you guys are all having a great week. We are going to be discussing our monthly community connections where we share some stories and questions that you all have sent in to us. And if as you're listening, you think, you know, I'd like to ask them a question or I'd like to share that really cool story, you can always do so by emailing us, enlightenedempaths at gmail.com, or you can message us on Facebook. We are there under Enlightened Empaths, and we are growing on that community page, and other people are connecting and meeting each other, so we hope you join us on there. But for now, let's dive into our questions and stories. Denise, would you like to start us off? I'd love to. Uh, This first comment and question, it says, Hi, thank you so much for all you do. I've been listening to Psychic Teachers, Enlightened Empaths, and Deb and Friends, and y'all have given me much insight, entertainment, and inspiration. I listened to your recent episode with Lynn Robinson and have to share something that happened to me on the following day after I heard her story about receiving a sign. A little backstory. I've been struggling a little bit because my husband told me via email last weekend that he didn't want to be married anymore. I've handled it pretty well, I think, using my crystals and spirit for strength. I've also been given support from my grandparents who are passed away, but have guided me on often on my spiritual journey. When I listened to your recent episode, which talked about signs from above, I was compelled to ask the above for a sign. My first thought was to ask for purple feathers, like in the podcast, but I dismissed that thought, thinking it was too much like the sign in Lynn's story and not personal to me. So I thought for a minute and instead asked the above to just send me a sign that I wasn't alone in the form of an amethyst. I own one amethyst and tried to make it clear that this one, which I see daily, wouldn't count. The next day, I was pretty busy at work and forgot all about my question for an amethyst sign until I was walking to my car. I felt a little depressed, to be honest, that I hadn't received a sign. I knew that when I returned home, the only amethyst that would be there would be the one I already owned and saw daily. I didn't let it bother me, reminding myself I was already being so strong about my husband leaving me that I shouldn't allow myself to become upset over something so trivial. At home, the sign already forgotten again. I felt like I was walking into someone else's home. This was in part because it will really be someone else's home when we divorce and we have to sell it, and partly because my husband hired cleaners to come in and do a deep clean. He's always been dissatisfied with my housekeeping, and this was the basis for our last argument. Everything in the house was moved just a little, and although it smelled wonderfully and it looked better than ever, I felt a sense of sadness, like I was being wiped from the place. I walked through the house, reminding myself to look at the happy things. The cleaners had left all the windows open, and the sunlight poured in and was uplifting. Someone had clothed a few of my daughter's dolls, which are more often than not left naked, and I smiled, imagining some young adults taking a break from scrubbing our grime to enjoy a few minutes of just being silly. Someone else had moved my son's Texaco truck from a corner, probably to clean under it, and it was the first thing I saw when I entered the room. I have a special affection for the truck because my dad gave it to me, and he used to play with it as a child. These things brought me a little ray of sunshine, but nothing compared to when I looked under my do- at my daughter's dresser. Sitting on my young daughter's dresser was a purple purple craft feather resting next to one of my grandmother's earrings. The earring was one of a pair that had been given to me after she died, and it had been more than a year since I had lost it. I suppose one of the cleaners found these items and placed it there. The craft feather isn't much of a stretch since my daughter loves making things, but the earring had been missing so long that I assumed it gone forever. I'm convinced that the purple feather and the earring are a sign telling me that my grandmother is with me during this trying time, and it's done my heart good. I've known in my heart of hearts that I'm not alone, but I just really need more confirmation right now. Yes, I didn't get the amethyst I asked for, but technically I had asked for a purple feather first before choosing to dismiss it, and finding my grandmother's earring was beyond what I had asked for. I'll be wearing the earrings to work tomorrow and making myself walk tall as she always did. Thank you so much for all you do in your shows, which is touching so many lives in so many positive ways. And she's very thankful a million times over. This is from Angela. So Angela, thank you so very much for sharing that, that story. That was incredible. Wow. That really is. And you know, to go through a divorce is 
so devastating. I liken it to a death, not as final or difficult as a death, but it's similar in that you will grieve it in different ways at different times. And the fact that she's making and taking these proactive steps to ask for help and ask for confirmation that she's not alone and to invite the help of her team on the other side and is such a great sign. And I'm really glad that she is getting the signs that she's asking for. And I think all of us listeners should just keep her in our prayers this holiday season because that's just a difficult time to go through in, in every way. And I absolutely love that at the very beginning of the note, she said, I've been given support from my grandparents who have passed away, have, but have guided me often on my spiritual journey. And then to have the feather and her grandmother's earring, that is just so fantastic. It really is. And, you know, I'll bet that amethyst will show up in one way, shape, or form before she knows it. Sometimes when we ask for signs, I always get this feeling of my guide going, really, really, lady, this is what you need now. So and that time okay. might have been a little too hard. Right. And I'm not, I'm a very patient person. I, I couldn't have done what I did all those years if I wasn't a patient person. But sometimes when it comes to a sign, I want it now, damn it. I don't want to wait three days. I don't want to wait three weeks. I w okay, if you're really there, then boom, show it to me. And I know that that's not realistic. And when I let it go is when it shows up, when I stop looking right. for it. Right, exactly. And, I, you know, what was it, uh, two or three years ago, we were getting ready for the first day of school. And, you know, my kids always get a little bit nervous before the first day of school. And so my youngest, Chloe, said, I asked my guides to show me a sign that this is going to be a good school year. I said, that's great, honey. And so we're driving to school, and I was picking up my other daughter's best friend so they could walk in together. You remember how important that was in yes. middle school, right? <laughs> yes. So we're stopped in, in her neighborhood, and in the little retention pond across the street was a giant eagle. Wow. And I'm in North Carolina. I, I've never, ever seen an eagle in North Carolina. I was such an embarrassing mom. I got out of the car. I took video. I took pictures. <laughs> I'm like, Chloe, that's your time. And she did have a great year. So anyway, a couple of weeks ago, I was telling you, Denise, I had this dream about a new guide in my life. And I really wanted to know if that dream was an, an actual you know, spiritual visit or if it was just a dream. So I said, okay, if that was a real thing, please show me an eagle this week. I was thinking, you know, they could do it for Chloe. They could do it for me. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to you, I think it was like Wednesday or Thursday. And I said, I guess it was just a dream because I have not seen an eagle. And I always give my guides or my loved ones in heaven a timeline. I think that's really important. So I had that dream Sunday morning or well, Saturday night, but Sunday morning, I asked to see the eagle by Friday. And so I was talking to you, I don't know, Wednesday or Thursday afternoon last week, and I had not seen the eagle. And I was like, okay, whatever. It was just a dream. It was a nice dream. Leave it be. That night, I'm scrolling through Facebook, and one of my friends had posted a video of an eagle being rescued. Wow. And I thought, okay, I get it. Like, it doesn't, you guys can't materialize a live eagle in my front yard this week. I understand <laughs> I will take this Facebook video showing up on my feed as, as the sign. So that's something else I would suggest um, that she say, you know, if you can't show me an actual amethyst, please confirm that that was a sign by showing me a picture of an amethyst, mm -hmm. either on TV or in my social media feed or, or, or something like that. Or you may okay. turn on the radio and they're talking about amethyst or they're, you know, there's a new amethyst mine or, I mean, it can be any, if, if it connects with it, you have, and I agree with you, throw a wider net because I still think that it's not really easy for them to always materialize and show us what we want to see. I think no. it, it takes some work on their part as well, which I greatly appreciate. So you, you I ready for too. the next one? I am. This one says, okay. hello, Denise and Samantha. First of all, thank you for your show. I've listened to every episode and you both make me feel like how I've always felt is normal, which is so refreshing. Well, that's, isn't that nice, Denise? Because really that's oh, kind of our goal. Yes. Um, I've also had two readings with Denise and she was spot on and comforting oh. in some really big transitional times for me. 
Well, that is the truth, Denise. That's You're always sweet. spot on. No, oh, thank you. I was listening. I was listening to your show today when Samantha was talking about a spirit grabbing onto a chakra and pulling energy. I had a baby four months ago, and for the first two months, I felt great. Then I started getting really bad anxiety to a point that sometimes I just couldn't function. It feels like some t- someone has a fist in my solar plexus and is squeezing, especially when I first walk through the door. This almost exclusively happens at home. I've been using my family a lot for support through this and feel totally fine if someone is here or I'm not at home. I've been blaming how I feel on postpartum hormones, but listening today sounded eerily similar to what I've been feeling. I've also been seeing a lot of things out of the corner of my eye at home. Nothing is ever there, but I'm constantly turning because I think I see something. Also, several months ago, I was home with my two very young boys and dog when the dog, when the dog jumped up and stared at a spot in the kitchen growling with his hair raised, and I certainly did not get a good feeling. I live in my grandparents' home and frequently feel their presence, but this has always felt warm and comforting, whereas this feels very different. I can't pin this event exactly to when I started feeling anxious and depressed, but they happened around the same time. Any advice would be appreciated. Okay, so I would like to know if she's already had the baby. Yes, because it yes. said she had yes. a baby. She said, I had a baby four months ago. Okay. Because what I wonder, from everything I have read, hospitals are one of the biggest areas for... That's exactly what I was thinking. That, that It's so spot on, yes. Yeah. And I wonder, too, if she had a C-section or if she had the baby naturally. Because anytime you have surgery when they're cutting into your aura... Uh, that can create an opening for stuff to glom onto you. And so I just wonder if it isn't connected to that. Because that does not feel like postpartum. Postpartum doesn't come and go when you enter the home or leave the home. Um, So I don't feel that that's a postpartum issue. I am not a doctor. I am (laughs) not saying don't get checked out for postpartum blues. I'm just saying that this does sound more like something paranormal. So there's a couple of things that she can do. One thing I would recommend is to take weekly salt baths to really start to clean your spiritual energy and scrub clean anything that has glommed on to you. I would recommend saging your house and yourself a lot. And I would recommend uh, sitting in meditation and calling in who represents protection for you. So for some, that might be Buddha or Jesus or Archangel Michael. It might be your grandparents who she said, you know, always had uh, come to visit her house spiritually with a warm and comforting feeling. So you could call on them since that connection of love and their connection to your home will really bring that energy in even stronger. I'd call on all of them. And I would ask them to help you clean out and get rid of whatever this negative energy is. And then I would say those words I always say, I command and demand that anything or anyone not of the light leave my energy, my home, my presence, and my family now and forever in all directions of time. Amen. That's beautiful. I think the validation of the dog acknowledging it as well is important to to put in there and growling with his hair raised and she acknowledges that she didn't get a good feeling about it there's also two other younger children in the house the other thing the timeline of this a lot of people have been feeling uneasy energy around themselves they've been feeling you know different energies in their homes or you know just sensing things and seeing things out of the peripheral vision that's come up over and over and over for people that I've been talking with the past several months. And I really believe when you give birth, when you have an, and babies are the purest light. I believe that they just, they are such a pure light. And with this, this is going to sound a little out there, but not really. The more we shine our light, the more it raises that polarity of darkness. I really do believe that. I've said it before. So, and also I don't think there's a more vulnerable time in your life than when you're caring for a brand new infant because you're, you're in protective, you're exhausted, you're trying to, and then to get bombarded energetically, that's a lot to deal with. And what I visualized was a big, and I haven't used this technique in years and years, but one thing you can do is you can visualize like a big vacuum hose over the top of your house. 
and suck out all that negativity because the house itself, and I'm not going to jump into a whole reading, but the house itself doesn't feel negative. It feels like something passing through. It feels like there's something there that's impacting the energy. Does that like, exactly. make any sense? Yeah, no, it really does. I, I agree 100%. And the other thing that makes me think this is paranormal, when I had young babies at home, I would feel anxious when I left the home. I remember the first time I took my three kids, and at, you know, at the time they were four, two, and newborn. The first time I took them to Target by myself, I literally called my friends and we celebrated because I was like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to put three kids in a cart and push it around? So the fact that she feels anxious when she's in the home, not out of the home, to me makes me feel like this is more of a paranormal situation. But I think that she can get rid of it. Now, Denise, tell me what you think about this. When my neighbor had that scary paranormal issue in her home years ago, I recommended this great paranormal team. They came over. They helped her a lot. One of the things they suggested, because she had a similar thing, her dog would look at something, bark, his hair would stand on end. Her hair would stand on end. She had a short little pixie cut, and it would stand right up. And the paranormal team said, anytime you see that or feel a cold spot, take a picture. So she did, and she actually ended up getting three shadow images out of all the pictures she took. and. I mean, they're in the shape and form of a of a person. What do you think about that? Because well, I'll tell you what I think before I let you talk. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like it was great for her because it gave her validation that something was going on because her husband was very no nonsense. He also owned his own business that they had just started when they moved here, so he was gone all the time working. And when he came home, he was like, oh, it's nothing. You're just frazzled with kids and blah, blah, blah. So to have that validation and confirmation that she really was sensing something was really good for her. But sometimes I feel like if you take pictures of it, it kind of invites it in or gives it the attention that you don't want to give it. So I'm confused about that. I think digital cameras are absolutely fantastic for this kind of work because you can, or your phone or whatever, because you can just like lift it up, boom, click, take a picture. And kind of a cool thing is I was leaving a place I knew I would never, ever be able to go back to. And it was, it had a lot of heartfelt memories there. And I took some pictures and I didn't look at them. And then when I looked at them later, there were so many orbs and there was one of the outside of the house and there was this huge um, like stretch of multicolored energy right over the top of the house. And it wasn't a blurb from the, the camera and it wasn't, I mean, it was, it was right there. It gave me a sense of peace. It also validated what I'd always felt in that place because it's a very um, intense memories, but also intense building. So I think, I don't think it invites it in. I think it in a weird sort of way, it gives you your power back because you're not doubting that it's even there. Like for me, I, I like evidence. I like to, I mean, I can see things, I can sense things. Yes, all of that. But I like when there's something that if I had a picture of it, it's like, oh, holy shit, that's true. Look, there's that little face looking back at me, even though it creeps me right out. Yeah, but no, I, I agree. I love the validation. The whole controversy about orbs. Like some people are into the orbs, they love them, they, oh my gosh, and other people are just anti-orb in pictures. Have you noticed that? Yeah, I have. It's very uh, black and white, that topic. Yeah. I do think some people are a little too much with orbs. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't remember if it's John Edward or John Holland who tells that story of the woman who was adamant that she had taken pictures of orbs and it was raindrops on a tree. <laughs> So I do think some people go a little overboard, but I'll tell you, for example, my cousins, my aunt, um, she lost her husband early on. He was 58 or 59. And they all met at the beach a couple of years ago. She had five kids and they each have like five kids. So big, big family. And so they all met at the beach this one weekend and hired a photographer and did all these photos. And so my cousin posted them on Facebook. And with that, she posted a picture from the Thanksgiving the year before and a picture of Easter from a couple of years back. So a lot of pictures of when all the family was together. In mm -hmm. every single photo, now these were taken at different times, 
and by different people, there was an orb always near my aunt. Mm. And I emailed my cousin, you know, and this is my dad's sister. And please let me tell you, my dad is not calling up his family going, well, we're going to add to the Christmas letter that my daughter, Samantha, who, you know, (laughs) went to graduate school is actually now a medium talking to dead people. And we couldn't be prouder. You know, no, he doesn't (laughs) share that. Oh, and nor do I on my Facebook page. So they had no idea. So I emailed her and I just said, this might sound really weird and out there, but this is what I noticed in every photo. There's an orb. I think it's your dad just letting you know he's still with you guys. And she called me. You know, I don't have a very close family. I know that's a shock. So I hadn't spoken to her on the phone in like 15 years. And she called me and was like, oh my gosh, I have just been trying to convince my family of that. I saw the same thing. Wow. And so I think in certain instances like that, you can't say, oh, that's dust that appeared on five different cameras in five different seasons, you know? Right. Uh, this, this is kind of a creepy woo-woo thing, but I live in a part of the country where there's a lot of old homes. We've talked about that. And sometimes I'll be out walking or I'll drive by and I'll just immediately get drawn to like look at a barn window or look at a house window. And I'll sense like a really like head to toe willies. I'll sense someone looking back out at me. And I've done this a few times is I've taken a quick picture. And a lot of times you'll, you will see shadows or you'll see features or you'll see something. And it's not a human. It's not someone or a dog or something else. It's more spirit. So that's another thing is you can catch them. <laughs> and I, that yeah. sounds so, so different. But I just think follow your instinct, follow your gut. And if you, and if you are able to get some validation from it, it can bring peace to your own inner knowing. But also it's kind of fun. Yeah. I agree. So I just want to, we we won't keep beating this to death, but I just want to say one more thing. In addition to doing all of the meditation and prayer techniques that Denise and I mentioned and the salt baths and the saging, also make your home so flippin' positive that this thing can't handle it. So for example, play soft music all the time in your home if you can, or if you leave the house. If, you know, most people have cable TV and there's that sound of the seasons channel that just plays metaphysical new age music all the time. And often if I'm leaving the house, I'll just leave that on just to kind of clear out the energy. The, there's a CD you can get or you can, if you have a smart TV, you can play it on YouTube of the Tibetan singing bowls. I think that's very healing. It's well known that the Gregorian chants are incredibly energetically cleansing. And so you can play a CD or a MP3, whatever of that. Just We'll just tell Alexa if you have her. Um, those are all really good to use sound therapy to clean your home. And have people over this holiday season if you can. You know, have more play dates at your house. Have a little white elephant party. Have people come over to help you bake, bake cookies. You could add a water fountain to your home. You could add more crystals, but just making the environment so happy and upbeat and positive, often stuff like that leaves on its own because it's like a garlic to them. They're like, look, I'm out of there. Hmm. Good to know. Just a suggestion. Okay. Would you like to read our next question? I would. Thank you. It says, hi, Samantha and Denise. First, I love your show. Well, thank you. I've learned so much and enjoy listening every week. Samantha, I'm also a big fan of psychic teachers. So I had a weird experience a few months ago. It was sort of a dream, but not. I haven't been able to figure it out if it was some sort of OBE or if it was maybe a past life memory or something else. I'm hoping you'll be able to shed some light on it for me. Here are the details. I was asleep and thought I was dreaming. Usually I dream in color, but this was in black and white. It seemed I was in a hospital room and there was someone in the hospital bed. I couldn't tell if I was visiting them or if I was them. At one point, it was as as if I looked at my stomach and I could see there were black spots. This seemed to indicate disease to me. The next thing I knew, I had an exhilarating feeling and I could feel myself in real life peeling away from my head and shoulders. I kept thinking and saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. I felt so excited and relieved. It was as if my consciousness was pulling away and was about a foot above my head. Then my speech became garbled, but it was in my mind. And I had an awareness that because I was leaving the body, I could no longer speak. 
then I freaked out and was suddenly back in my body and I woke up, totally bewildered but exhilarated. It was by far one of the strangest experiences I've ever had it hasn't happened again since. If you're able to share anything that might help some shed, shed some light on this, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you both for all you do. This, this is from uh, Julie, and I think my first reaction is, holy shit, that's intense. Yeah. Uh, also, that fine line between uh, dreaming, lucid dreaming, and that interim place when we're waking up. There's such a, I think it's a very flowing area of, of consciousness in that span. I do too. If the dream hadn't ended positively, I would say, you know, get to a doctor. Because I've read yeah. so many stories of people who have discovered that they, are, that they have a health issue via a dream. But the fact that it did end positively and these uh, black dots were removed from her stomach and she was saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, makes me feel that some type of possibility or potential was being healed or cleansed within her during the lucid dreaming state. Yeah. The fact that it's black and white is what's throwing me. I feel like that's significant and I don't know why. Not like I've been black and white. Have you? I haven't either. No, I never, ever have. It's always been very vivid color. But is that also a metaphor for seeing things as black and white as not seeing and hospitals would be about healing. Right. I mean, and I would definitely is, think this is positive. Go ahead. Stomach is. I know, well, if you think about your stomach, that's where your solar plexus area, your seat of power. But also, you know, you have to go into dreams. Or, and that's what I love because I love puzzles. But the metaphors of what does your stomach. And I mean, we can all grab a dream book and look up stomach. But is it a digestive issue? Is it trying to digest life? Is it something, you know, um, a gut feeling, like acknowledging a gut feeling. So you get to play around with the symbolism when it's really strong and see what hits for you best. There was a dream I was sharing with a friend of mine and there was someone, previous person in my life and had on really tight pants in the dream, which this person would never, ever wear tight, tight pants like that. And I said, I just can't get it. And then all of a sudden, clear as a bell, I wanted to thank myself and said, too big for his britches. And that was the meaning of the dream because it came like flying out of my mouth and it made perfect sense with what was going on in other situations. So if it depends on, and I do, I think sometimes my guides or those on the other side kind of mess around with me in dreams. Like, let, let's see, let's have some fun with this. Do I you ever agree. get that feeling? I agree. I do. I do. And I think what she needs to do is look at her dream experience thus far. Does she tend to dream literally or in symbols? And that will help her read if this is a, mm -hmm. you know, health issue that was cleared up in the dream state or if this is an emotional issue. Because the stomach is the seat of our solar plexus. And so it does deal with confidence, joy, depression, sadness, self-esteem, all of that stuff. So if she's been working on healing that in her waking life, I think that would be a sign that that has happened. If she's been having, you know, chronic IBS, you know, something more physical, then I would look at it that way. Either way, I'm just glad that it ended on a positive note. Me too. And if for some reason, this dream keeps reminding me of parallel lives. I'm really starting to become more and more of a believer in this concept of parallel lives. And I wonder if something was healed in a parallel life, and she was just witnessing it as her higher self in the dream state. That's interesting. That's the third time I've heard that in the last four days. Parallel life reference. Wow. wow. And she also brings up her speech being garbled, which communication, being able to find your voice. It, I'm glad it ended on a positive note, too, and it does feel like it was very empowering, but also coming out of her body, coming out of her shell. But there's some, I really feel like there's something in this dream about owning your power, finding your voice, putting yourself out there. It, it feels really good. Yeah, I agree. And that she's got but a lot I, of help with that too. Yes. And I do agree though, when there's something physical or a hospital or a concern, check into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we do get messages that way often about our health issues. Okay. This next one says, I'm currently listening to your November 
community connections and you just went over the letter from a woman wanting to open her third eye but she's afraid of seeing what traumatized her as a child. I can relate to this so much. I was a very psychic child. I would see shadow people in my room almost every night and no one around me believed what I was going through. In high school something very dark attached itself to me. I never saw it but I could feel it like it was a pillar of static electricity made up of all negative emotions. It would say horrible things to me and try to convince me to do terrible things to myself. It lasted for years, and the experience left me afraid of being open, and I shut the door as hard as I could. I still continue to see things, however, and after my first daughter was born, I saw what I can only describe as looking like the Slender Man, no hat, walking through my house. I felt a little helpless, like I would just always see and experience scary things. After finding your show, though, I started connecting with my spirit guides. I also started reaching out to other psychics and intuitives. Hearing other stories has been so validating for me, and hearing how other people got through it has been empowering. I'm sorry this is long, but I just wanted to say I completely understand what this woman is going through because I'm going through it as well. I also wanted to say thank you to her for posting the question and thank you wonderful ladies for answering it. Your podcast has been such a saving grace for me. You have no idea. You've both given me the courage to explore my gifts and I can't thank you enough for that. Thank you, Shannon. Well, thank you, Shannon, for sharing that so honestly and authentically. And I just want to say a couple of points before you jump in, Denise. The first time I read this, when she explained the negative entity made up of static electricity connecting to her. And then she said, um, I could, you know, I shut the door as hard as I could. The first thing I thought when I read that was mission accomplished. Mm -hmm. I've said this before and I'll say it again. I really believe that there is some type of battle out there between the light and the dark. And I think that the dark does this. They can see our light before we're born, when we're born, and they are on a mission to shut our light down. What better mission could they have? You know, I mean, they're, they probably feel very righteous in that goal. And it's very easy to shut someone's light down. It's too easy. All you have to do is scare them a little bit and boom, they shut the light down. So the fact that she continued to see things is so indicative of a very strong light and a strong intuition. And I'm just really proud that and, and happy and excited to read that she's opening it back up because that's exactly what we are all here to do. We are all here to embrace and shine our light as bright as it can be. And, you know, literally to hell <laughs> with the negative stuff that is yeah. trying to stop us. And what really shone through for me with this was finding like-minded people. Find mm -hmm. the people that who you are, who you can say. And this, it, I love, love, love that we can read this. This is our normal. So many people listening to this have experienced it or they've understood it or they would love to have a conversation with someone about that. And I think that that's another crucial, crucial key as we're all awakening, we're being bombarded, we're stepping into our own is find a way to connect with other people who get who you are and what your reality really is. Because it makes, it, it does, someone earlier mentioned that it, it makes it normal. And that's a huge part of feeling self-empowered, is if you don't feel like you're the, the odd man out or that, wow, nobody else sees it the way I do. I mean, I think I get as much from all the people listening as they get from what we're saying, just with that validation okay. where we're not in this alone, which is, incredible. I agree. And you know, another thing I would suggest, if you have had a scary or scary experiences that happened to you as a child and it made you shut down your intuition, one of the things I did early on as a kid, I was nine when I did this, but I asked somebody that I resonated with to be my spiritual protector. I didn't have a sense of spirit guides at that age. I believed in guardian angels, but they always felt so lofty to me. I never wanted to bother them. So when I was nine, do you know what I mean, though? Like, they're always yeah. flying around, and they come in if you have, like, an accident, and that's it. I don't know. So when I was nine, my mom was in the hospital uh, for about two weeks right before Christmas, and I went into the hospital chapel, and I got on my knees, like the good Catholic I am, and I prayed that my mom would get better. 
And then I prayed to Mother Mary, and I asked her to always be my main mom and to always watch over me. Oh. And when I walked out of the hospital, I remember this like it was yesterday. I was holding my dad's hand, and we were getting ready to go pick up some dinner and go home. And I tripped over something soft and squishy in the parking lot. And I looked down, and it was an ornament of Mother Mary. Wow. Oh, that is so now, cool. I know. At the time, we were living in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. So we were surrounded by Southern Baptists. Uh, there was one Catholic school and one Catholic church, St. Leo's, that I went to. There just weren't a lot of Catholics in that town at all. Mm-hmm. Um, so to find a Mother Mary ornament, I just thought was so unique and special. And to find it less than five minutes after I asked her to watch out for me, I think is pretty amazing. And she has shown up in many ways, in many miraculous ways throughout my life. And I really think it's because I always asked her to watch over me. Mm -hmm. Um, I have another quick story to share when, um, when, My former husband, Mike, when he was right around nine as well, fourth grade, he told his family that he wanted to be a police officer when he grew up. And they were like, oh, that's great. Wasn't super unusual. In his family, you're a cop, a firefighter, or a priest. So he said he wanted to be a police officer. And he goes up to bed and he falls asleep and he wakes up and there's this glowing light in in his room. And he swears he saw Archangel Michael. And all he said was, thank you for your service. I will always protect you. He told me that, and I sometimes, because I'm such a doubter, sometimes I wondered if he made that up, because I used to worry about him so much as a police officer. I mean, before I had kids and he worked the midnight shift, I would literally stay up all night because I would just, I was always so worried about him. And he would always say, don't forget, Archangel Michael's watching over me. So on our, um, one of our anniversaries, I got him an Archangel Michael medallion and had it engraved with his initials and the date that he became a police officer on the back. And he is not a jewelry wearing guy (laughs) at all. (laughs) But I always, and he would never wear his bulletproof vest. Can you, can you really, is that not the stupidest thing? But he's such a manly (laughs) man. He'd be like, no bullet's going to get to me. So anyway, but I would always make him wear the Archangel Michael medallion when he went to work. And he did. So the night he was shot in the line of duty, I'm sitting there in the bereavement room waiting to hear if he's alive or dead. And the nurse comes out and handed me the necklace and it was covered in blood. Oh. And I just remember holding that going, you son of a bitch, Archangel Michael, <laughs> where were you tonight? So, meanwhile, my older sister, who was a smoker at the time, was outside having a cigarette. And this nurse came by and said, are you related to the Faye family? And she said, yes. And she said, I I have to talk to someone. Something just happened to me. And my sister was like, well, sure, what happened? And the woman said, I'm not religious. I'm not even spiritual. The only person I ever used to pray to was Archangel Michael. And she said, but when when they rolled in Sergeant Faye, I felt that we just had to make him live. And he kept coding. And so I just stepped aside from the team. And for the first time since I was a kid, I prayed to Archangel Michael. And I heard a voice outside of my head. And she was like crying and shaking as she was telling this to my sister. She said, I heard this voice and it said, put your hand on his forehead. And she's like, you got to understand, there's like, you know, a thoracic surgeon, a vascular surgeon, all these doctors working on him. And I pushed my way through that crowd and I put my hand on his forehead. And that's when we heard the beep, beep, beep of his heart coming back. Wow. That is incredible. And my, my sister hugged her and said, thank you. And the woman said, I don't know if this means I'm going to church on Sunday, but I'm definitely <laughs> going to start praying again. And so that's just a reminder that even when we don't think we have that protection, we do. And so one of the things I would say to this listener and to anyone struggling with opening up to their intuition because of fear is pick someone that resonates with you and ask them to be your protector and to watch out and watch over you. And they will. I've seen it in my own life many, many times. I'm off my Thank you. The power of prayer again. That's right. Is it your turn? I think so, yeah. I was just checking. We still have time. Okay. 
Dear Samantha and Denise, I so enjoy your podcast. It's a world I was never exposed to, but I'm so interested in. After listening to your podcast, I feel like I'm awakening. Recently, when meditating, I felt myself go deeper as I asked to be shown that I could. I had recently charged my crystals, and they felt very powerful on that day. I felt my vibration rise, and I heard a very loud ringing in my left ear. Since then, whenever I meditate, I get that ringing. I've heard that it could mean the other side is trying to talk to me. Someone told me if I can slow down the sound, I'll be able to hear the words. Do you know anything about this? Okay, I have always, if that happens to me, I'll get that high pitch sound in my ear. And I have been told by many people, I've done a lot of research on this, that we're downloading, that we're downloading messages or we're downloading things we need to know, or it's almost like a, a computer update is the way that I, I look at it. I think that you can, I mean, we can always ask them, turn it up, turn it down. I've never heard, I've never even considered turning it down. Sometimes I'll write after, you know, physically get my pen out and write after I get that ringing sound and I've had messages come through that way. Or um, I kind of sometimes think of it as like a little pay attention wake up call as well. And if it's happening all the time for her in meditation, that sure feels like a really strong validation that she's, this is a, a specific sign that they're going to use with her. And possibly she could build up her clear audience very easily. I agree. Uh, awesome suggestions. There's a really good book by Doreen Virtue called How to Hear Your Angels. And she has an entire chapter devoted to this phenomenon of ringing in the ears. And so that might be a good resource. Even though I am heartbroken that Doreen Virtue now renounces all of this work and her work, <laughs> what she did write before this different change she's going through, I thought was really good. And in that book, How to Hear Your Angels, she has a, a chapter on ringing in the ears. And she, she agrees with what you're saying, Denise, that it is a download. Often it's information that we might not be ready to accept consciously but it's mm -hmm. being given to our subconscious and will come to the surface when we're ready to hear it. So I think those are all really good suggestions. Are we already out of time? Oh my goodness. Boy, that it went, went by really fast and we have so many other great questions to get to, but we will do that in January. Um, like I said at the beginning of the show, if you want to ask a question or share a story or a lovely incident of when you received a sign or some spiritual help, please do so either at our Facebook page or email enlightenedempaths at gmail.com. We want to wish you all a very, very, very happy, happy, happy end to your 2018 and a joyful beginning to your 2019. Denise and I have some exciting shows coming up in January. We're going to be talking about manifesting in the new year, the numerology of the new year, some st tips, strategies, and techniques for really calling in positive energy to start your new year. I truly believe that on our birthday and at the new year, those two times in our year, extra energy is called to each of us to help us manifest. It's almost like the universe is pausing and saying, what do you want? So we hope that you spend some time as we are closing out the end of 2018, really reflecting on this year, but also focusing on what specifically you want to invite into the new year and maybe work on creating a goal book or a vision board or a crystal grid that really focuses your intent for the positive energy you want to bring into your new year. And so we're going to be touching on a lot of that in January. And plus, as always, we'll bring you some really exciting new guests. So thank you so much for being with us all this year. And we look forward to another year of exciting and informative and uplifting shows. And we're just grateful that you have been on this journey with us. Do thank you want to you add so anything much. to that? I do. I, this has been such a growing experience for each of us, but also we've had so, so much positive feedback from all of you. And I'd like to just put a, say thank you to all the incredible guests that we had on. I peeked at the numbers. We've made over a quarter of a million downloads this year on, and that is amazing to me that we're being heard in 140 countries around the world. And I am so humbled and feeling so incredibly blessed that all of you are a part of that. So thank you. 
Wow. We have, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you from our humble, grateful hearts. So as always, everybody, don't forget to show up, do great work, and share your light. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.